Okay, let's now go straight into the binomial distribution. This is for discrete data, really important. So what sort of physical situation does the binomial distribution work for? Just the general setup is that we repeat an experiment several times, and each time we do it, there's a, only two possible outcomes. And just for convenience, we call those success and failure. So, for example, tossing a coin has only two outcomes, head or tail, and we it doesn't matter which. I mean, success doesn't mean success in the usual term. It's just in the usual sense of the word. It's just a convenient way of um, describing some situation. We could call success getting ahead. Okay, so we toss a coin and we can toss it. We repeat it in times, so 20 times. And then that's our variable big X, our random variable, is the number of heads. And little x is the values that can take 0 up to 20. And we want to find the probability of getting each of those little x's. So that's the situation for the binomial. So this, this box, this blue box here, it's an important summary of a binomial which you really need to understand before you get into too much detail working with the thing. First of all, the binomial is, you need to get used to this terminology, it's a two-parameter distribution. And without going into a lot of definition about what we mean by that, it means we need two values or two parameters. You just have to get used to it. We need two parameters to be able to describe this distribution. Right, because in fact, in the formula, there are two variables, if you like, but I don't want to confuse that with our random variable. So there are two parameters, n and p, in the equation for the binomial. So it has two parameters. If you know n and you know p, then you can work out all the probabilities of the little x's. What are n and p? n is the number of times we repeat the experiment, so the number of times we toss the coin, 20 say. And p is the probability of a success, probability of a success. So with a fair coin, it's a half. Sometimes, yes, they do it here, you will see Q can appear in binomial stuff sometimes. That's the probability of failure. But th there's nothing new here, because if you know the success, probability of success, then the probability of failure must be 1 minus, because there's only two possible outcomes. You get one or the other. So the Q does not give new information, but it does sometimes appear in the formula. Some books will write it as Q, and some will write it just as 1 minus P in the formula. It, it doesn't matter. The nice thing about this two-parameter distribution is we can very quickly find the mean and the standard deviation once we know our two parameters, N and P. The expected value, the mean of our random variable, is just N times P. And the variance which, remember, is the standard deviation squared, is just NPQ, or NP times 1 minus P. And so if we want the standard deviation, we just take the square root of that. Remember, variance is standard deviation squared. OK, that's a very quick overview of the binomial distribution. Now, our second discrete distribution is the Poisson. And under certain conditions, these two are very similar. But they can also be quite different, so we need to make sure that we understand, first of all, the different setup for a Poisson, the, the different physical situation. So whereas um, the binomial, you were looking at a certain number of trials, a certain number of times you toss the coin, and then there is a probability of success in each trial. With the Poisson, you are looking at how many times something happens in a certain interval of time or of space. So how many times does the website crash per day? And that interval here is the day. How many, so that's the discrete part, per day? Or um, how many car crashes are there per kilometre of road? 
although we'll come back to that that's not really a very good Poisson example um, how many bacteria per cubic centimeter whatever when you've got an interval of time or space and you're measuring something on that you may well have a Poisson distribution that's what differentiates it from the binomial and the beauty of the Poisson if you can use it is it's a single parameter distribution all you need to know is the, this mean this mu how many what's the average number uh, of crashes um, website crashes per day and once we know that then we can work out all the other probabilities it's quite remarkable so let's get used to this parameter because it is really important the binomial you had two parameters n the number of times you repeated the experiment and p the probability of success each time with the Poisson it's just a single parameter distribution you just have to know mu or m the average number of that event happening in your interval now an interesting point is that with the bin with the binomial distribution as n gets very very large <laughs> and what do we mean by that well it's not so hard not so easy to define but as n gets very large and as long as the probability of success p is sort of nearer the middle than at the it's not too extreme it's not close to zero and it's not too close to one it's more in the middle somewhere like a, a coin a probability of a half it's a good example and if you toss the coin I don't know maybe 50 times maybe more then that binomial distribution would actually become very close to the Poisson and the Poisson is easier to use in a way so that's an interesting that, that's where the two do become similar for only very uh, few number of repeats in the binomial if you only toss a coin five times and or if the probability of success, of success is nearer the extremes neither nearer zero or one then the, the binomial does not is not well approximated by the Poisson but under some conditions it can be Now the f there are four assumptions that must be met before you can use the Poisson. So we need to look at those pretty carefully. Here they are on page uh, 882. The first two are fairly technical and we won't go into those too much in this course. They are important but they're a little technical. But the last two, so yeah, let's look at uh, the last two in particular. So the probability of an event within a certain interval does, must not change over different intervals. Hmm. So that's where we come back to that traffic idea. It sounds at, at first as if the number of car accidents per kilometre could be a, a wonderful Poisson. But if you think about it, is it likely that at each kilometre that this probability is not changing so between Christian Sand and Arendal is it going to be the same sort of probability over each kilometer I doubt it um, some parts of the, any road are more likely to have accidents than others just because of that. so that may not satisfy the conditions for Poisson we shouldn't go ahead and use Poisson with those data also the probability of an event in one interval is independent of the probability of it happening in some other interval so what happens in one interval shouldn't affect the likelihood of it happening um, earlier or later 